Shout to the and family. We greet everybody. We are Hebrew Readers Church. We thank you all for joining us today. Uh, we are in the Feast of Purim. It's a two-day feast, and this is exactly why we're here. We're going to be going into all the information on it, all the laws concerning the feast. And also, we're going to be doing a couple other lessons going into what actually happened during the feast that actually established the feast on the heavenly tablets. Brother Kasafo, without further ado, you want to go ahead and run us through this? Yes, please. The Feast of Purim is a two-day feast on the 14th and 15th day of the 12th month, which is Adar in the scriptures. It's a feast of joy and sharing of portions of food with brothers and sisters in the faith and giving gifts to the poor without partiality. Can you read Esther chapter 9, verse 19, please? Yes. Therefore, the Jews of the villages that dwelt in the unwalled towns made the 14th day of the month of Dar a day of gladness and feasting and a good day and of sending portions one to another. That word portions is H 4490. It means properly something weighed out. That is generally a division, specifically of food, a ration, also a lot. Can you read Esther chapter 9, verse 20 to 22, please? And Mordecai wrote these things and sent letters unto all the Jews that were in all the provinces of the king, Asasurus, both nigh and far, to establish this among them, that they should keep the fourteenth day of the month of Adar, and the fifteenth day of the same yearly, as the days wherein the Jews rested from their enemies, and the month which was turned unto them from sorrow to joy, and from mourning into a good day that they should make them days of feasting and joy and of sending portions one to another and gifts to the poor. The definition of gift is H4979, a present, specifically in a good sense, a sacrificial offering, in a bad sense, a bribe, a gift. So this Feast of Purim, we give gifts of things that are needful unto the poor, without distinction or partiality according to the truth of the commands of simplicity and guilelessness. Can you read the Shepherd of Hermas, Mandate 2, chapter 1, verse 4 to 6? Yes. But clothe thyself in reverence, wherein there's no evil stumbling block, but all things are smooth and glassome. Work that which is good, and of thy labors which Elohim giveth thee. Give to all that are in want freely, not questioning to whom thou shalt give, and to whom thou shalt not give. Give to all. For to all Elohim desireth that there should be given of his own bounties. They then that receive shall render an account to Elohim why they received it, and to what end. For they that receive in distress shall not be judged, but they that receive by false pretense shall pay the penalty. He then that giveth is guiltless, for he hath received from Ahia the ministration to perform it. He hath performed it in sincerity by making no distinction to whom to give or not to give. This ministration then, when sincerely performed, becomes glorious in the sight of Elohim. He therefore that ministereth thus sincerely shall live unto Elohim. So Elohim gave us this ministry of giving gifts unto the poor. We do it without distinction, and that is what is glorious in the sight of Elohim. So we give whatever we might find that would be needful for the poor, or that's useful for them. And we give it from our heart, whether it be clothing, hygiene, products, or whatever Allah may have prospered us to have or get to bless the poor with as a gift. There is a blessing that comes from having a bountiful eye unto the poor. Can you read Psalms chapter 1, verse 1 to 3, please? To the chief musician of Psalm of David, blessed is he that considereth the poor, Ahia would deliver him in time of trouble. Ahia will preserve him and keep him alive, and he shall be blessed upon the earth. And thou wilt not deliver him unto the will of his enemies. Ahia will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing. Thou wilt make all his bed in his sickness. There we see from the exhortations the blessings and healings that come from being considerate of the poor. Now this isn't for the Jews only. The Feast of Purim is ordained for all nations who join themselves unto Ahaya, Elohim of Israel. Can you read Esther chapter 9, verse 26 and 27, please? Wherefore they call these days Purim, after the name of Pur. Therefore, for all the words of this letter, and of that which they had seen concerning this matter, and which had come unto them. 
the Jews ordained, and took upon them, and upon their seed, and upon all such as joined themselves unto them, so as it should not fail, that they would keep these two days according to their writing, and according to their appointed time every year. We see this feast is not only for the seed of the Jews, but also upon all such as joined themselves unto them. There were many Gentiles that converted unto the Jews' religion and kept the feast as well at that time. Can you read Esther chapter 8, verse 17, please? And in every province, and in every city, whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came, the Jews had joy and gladness, a feast and a good day. And many of the people of the land became Jews, for the fear of the Jews fell upon them. Read Esther 9 and 28, please. And that these days should be remembered and kept throughout every generation, every family, every province, and every city. And that these days of Purim should not fail from among the Jews, nor the memorial of them perish from their seed. So there we see is a continual feast for generations. Now, the laws of the feast of Christ are for two days, as we talked about in the beginning. Seeing as there is a holy convocation, we can do the things that pertain to our eating, like cooking and cleaning the areas where we dine. Can you read Exodus chapter 12 or 16, please? Yes. And in the first day there shall be an holy convocation, and in the seventh day there shall be an holy convocation to you. No matter what shall be done in them, save that which every man must eat, that only may be done of you. So there we see it's just like a Sabbath, but we can do the things that pertain to our eating in regards to cooking and cleaning in the area where we're cooking and in the area where we're dining. Now, the requirements for this feast of Purim is that we share portions of food amongst one another with brothers and sisters in the faith, and we give gifts to the poor, things that would be helpful for them or needful for them in their respective situations. So whatever you may find in your hand that Allah Hayyam has increased you with and you have access and you feel it will be useful for them or helpful for them, give it as a gift whether it be hygiene products, clothing, or things of that nature. Allah be gracious to prosper the work and your endeavor from your heart to give unto the poor. And we do these things without distinction as believers in Yahche Christ. Can you read Luke chapter 6, verse 36, please? Be ye therefore merciful, as your Father also is merciful. Amen. Amen. So with that, we have to be mindful not to invite unbelievers to the feast itself because it's holy and we wouldn't want to set a stumbling block before anyone. But if they desire to come and partake in the feast of their own desire, we ought to be hospitable as is fitting of a believer in Yache Christ. For even Yache himself ate with publicans and sinners that came unto him. Can we read Matthew chapter 9 verse 10 to 13 please? And it came to pass, as Yahweh said at meat in the house, Behold, many publicans and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto his disciples, Why eat if your master with publicans and sinners? But when Yahweh heard that, he said unto them, They that be whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. But go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. For I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So we see that Yache came to bring sinners to repentance, so the opportunity is there for anyone to come unto his feast of their own heart. Now, we also have a good example by Tobit that it's righteous to invite believers in Yache Christ to the feast, while Yache showed we also do not deny unbelievers who may be led of their own heart to come learn of his feast as well. Can we read Tobit chapter 2, verse 1 and 2, please? Yes. Now when I was come home again, and my wife Anna was restored unto me with my son Tobias, in the Feast of Pentecost, which is the holy feast of the seven weeks, there was a good dinner prepared me, and in the which I sat down to eat. And when I saw abundance of meat, I said to my son, Go and bring me what poor man soever thou shalt find out of our brethren, who is mindful of Ahiah, and lo, I tarry for thee. There we see he inviting someone that was mindful of Ahaya, so we can understand we invite believers to the feast. Now our brethren 
My brethren is anyone of any nation that believes on the name of Yahche Christ and keep the commandments and bear the fruits of the Spirit. Can we read Galatians chapter 3 verse 26 to 29 please? For ye are all the children of Elohim by faith in Christ Yahche. For as many as you have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Mm. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Yahche. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. Amen. By doing the will of the Father to keep his commandments and bear the fruits of the Spirit, we are also brothers and sisters. Can you read Matthew chapter 12, verse 49 and 50, please? And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same as my brother and sister and mother. All right, that's edification on how to keep the feast. All right. So just so everybody knows, the uh, regular Sabbath day, of course, like the brother said, we can always give portions to one another. But the only difference with Feast of Perm is that you can actually cook on the feast day. So just so everybody knows, it's not a transgression to cook on the feast day of Purim. Praise Ahaya for the edification. We hope you all enjoy the feast, and we look forward to spending time with you all again in the near future. Ahaya be with you, and peace be with you all. Chalam. Thank you.